uh, one of my friends worked with, uh, she did a lot of work for Playboy. Um, she was in a lot of their magazines. Yeah, they've got like books of lingerie, Girls of Summer. You know, back then they did, right? They had, they had all sorts of things. And um, through her, I ended up um, being in, you know, in a shoot for Playboy's book of lingerie. Um, I kind of just did all that until I ended up, you know, graduated from college. I ended up sticking with being a stripper because it was more fun. I, I didn't do anything with my degree. I had a chemistry degree. And then, um, then I stayed home. I was a stay at home mom. And then when my kids got older, I decided I wanted to go, um, I wanted to get a, a, a real job, right? And so I went back to school. I got a master's in biomedical engineering. Hello, I am John Brink, and we are podcasting on the Brink from downtown Prince George, British Columbia, Canada. And for all those people watching us from around the world, they say, hmm, we know where Canada is, and, and we know where British Columbia is. Where is Prince George? Well, one big city in British Columbia is called Vancouver. We are 500 miles north of Vancouver, or for our friends in Europe, 800 kilometers. And so what is Prince George all about? Well, it's about 80, 90,000 people. It is in the center of British Columbia, meaning north to south, east to west, exactly in the center. It is nature's paradise. There is forest all around us. There is wildlife all around us, black bears, grizzlies, caribou, deer, you name it, we have it here. And all around us in 50 miles are more than 100 lakes. And, and we want to be careful not to tell too many people about where we are because they all want to come here. And, and not really, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so they, today a very, very special guest and her name is Lori Brandt. Lori, welcome to the show, and I'm going to introduce some of the things that you do. Lori is sure. an author of a book called Bodies to Die For, a thriller mm -hmm. that talk, takes a hard look at the social media, a $70 billion diet industry, and the war on women bodies, the wars we wage with each other and with ourselves, Lori is also a lifting enthusiast, group fitness instructor, yoga teacher, a software quality engineer. In her past lives, she has been a gymnast, dancer, and a playboy model, and a bodybuilder. Lori, really? My yeah. goodness, I love it. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I don't even know really where to start. Let's start here. So where were you born? And then maybe give me some of your initial background, the school where you want to and all the things that you did. And then gradually you want into uh, fitness and all those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. So I was born in, uh, in Buffalo, Minnesota. And I was, um, I will say I was very fortunate. I was born to two fabulous parents and um this this i think kind of shielded me as i as i grew up some of the things that i've been exposed to i think i think having good parents really set the stage for me and shielded me from some of the things that i that i grew up to encounter so i i, I grew up in buffalo minnesota and when i was in and i was in dance ever since i was three years old i don't even remember my first my first um you know, my first dance class. I've been, I've been, I've been on stage since I can remember. And when I was 10 years old, my dance teacher in an effort to lose weight had her jaw wired shut. And it left such an enormous impression on me that, um, that, that a grown woman, a woman that, you know, I, I viewed as like a role model that, that she would wire her jaw shut to lose weight. And, and not just that, but that everybody around seemed okay with it. It was just, you know, Barb's just, you know, going to have her jaw wired shut for a few months and Jill's going to teach the class while Barb's jaw is wired shut because she wanted to lose some weight. And, and it, it left such an impact on me that I think ever since about that age, I've been, it's been very much on my radar that the links that women will go to and, and how, how society like accepts it and just kind of shrugs. 
and and so you know i continued with dance you know i was also then a gymnast and all, all through um school i did gymnastics and uh you know so that like again you know, you're in leotards um you know you have to you know as, as a gymnast you you have to be um you have to have a good relative strength right like you can't you can't have too much extra fat or it's going to be hard to uh to do some of these things right um and and so it, it's very much uh you know how how you look in your your body especially you know being um in front of an audience in, in a leotard all the time it, you you really have to be um on that and then you know i had a couple friends in high school who had some pretty serious eating disorders one was hospitalized one accidentally swallowed a spoon while she was trying to a, a small spoon while trying to make herself vomit it got stuck in her esophagus it had to be cut or maybe a, i don't know it got, it got stuck somewhere in here in her chest and it had to get cut out mm. um yeah, so like like this just left like Im, Im, you know impressions on me. And then when I went to college, um, while I was in college, I I got a, a side a side hustle as a um I was working as a stripper at a local club, and um you know so again now now you know now you're monetizing it, uh so so it just makes you very very aware of of you know and granted I, I mean I put myself in that position, but it makes you very aware of how how the world is um you know, is looking at you and, and granted again, I'm, I'm putting myself on a stage so that, that I guess it, you know, but it just, it just makes one very self-critical or very self-aware of, of, of how you look. And, right. um, and, and because, because I was doing that, I, um, uh, one of my friends worked with, uh, she did a lot of work for Playboy. Um, she was in a lot of their magazines. Yeah. They've got like books of lingerie girls of summer, you know, but back then they did, right. They, they had all sorts of things. And, um, through her, I ended up um, being in, you know, in a shoot for Playbase Book of Lingerie. Um, I, I kind of just did all that until I ended up, you know, graduated from college. I ended up sticking with being a stripper because it was more fun. I, I didn't do anything with my degree. I had a chemistry degree. And then, um, then I stayed home. I was a stay-at-home mom. And then when my kids got older, I decided I wanted to go, um, I wanted to get a, a, a real job, right? And so I went back to school, I got a master's in biomedical engineering. And, um, and so now, so now, you know, now I'm like using my mind, right? And what really got me is that now I'm in the workforce, and I'm working with other women who are engineers and project managers and everything, and get a group of women together. And what do we talk about? We all talk about like, oh, I, I, I got so fat. I want to lose five pounds. I want to lose 10 pounds. It, it, it really got me that even, um, you know, even, even people who aren't, are, you know, relying on their bodies for a living is such a big part of them. Yeah. So, Lori, uh, biomedical, yeah. uh, what yeah, does engineer. that mean? Uh, engineer. Yeah. So what is it? Biomedical engineer. Uh, so it's it's a field of engineering that you can go into. It, it's um it has like oh it's got like a lot of the biological sciences. Like you have to have like you know like the, the chemistry and everything, but you have to have the biology. Um, it, it's it's a very similar track to say a pre med degree. Um, very very similar. You have to have a lot of math. You have to have, you have to have the whole engineering. Um, you okay. know like part of a curriculum you know like you have to have differential equations which is really hard um uh, i can't I just remember differential equations because it was really hard you know, there's neuroscience there's um there's biochemistry you know it, it's stuff like that and you and get then to know a lot of your time, physical body better oh then? absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah you have to know all all the all the bones in your body all the muscles right. in your body all the you okay. got to all that yeah yeah. Okay. I don't know if I know it anymore, but to get that degree, you had to know it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and so I got I got that. Uh, and then as um, so that I I've been working for a um, I've been working for a great big um medical device pharmaceutical company for the last uh probably ten years. I've been in this profession for maybe twelve years, but I've been working in this profession at this current job for ten years. And the last four of those, I've been software quality for medical devices. And, um, but then I started, I started bodybuilding, um, a number of years ago and somewhere along the way, something changed. Um, I used to lift weights, you know, I was always very fit, but I, um, in my twenties, I, and when I was younger, it was really about trying to achieve a look. I was, you know, exercising to hit a certain look, but then, so if um, you go, now, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. just asking a question here, 
Uh, yeah. So this fitness and then going to, mm -hmm. I'm into fitness, I'm into bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, I saw your body, a bodybuilder, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the oldest competitive yeah. bodybuilder in North America. And I'm 84. I saw that. I'm nearly 84. So if I think about okay. bodybuilding, uh, uh, I yeah. think about it in terms of things that we know from each other. If we have been competitive and I have a yep. lot of friends, female friends, that yeah. in particular focus on bikinis of different yep. sorts and, and, uh, yeah. and, and have been many times in competitions, both yep. on provincial, national level. And, yep. uh, but a lot of people respectfully do not always understand that I, yeah. one of the last ones I was at is provincially here. And there mm -hmm. must have been 250 athletes, both male and female. And yeah. everybody that was there belonged mm -hmm. there. You know, you mm -hmm. could see that yeah. this takes a lot of work and staying the course, not only yeah. diet, but understanding your body. And it takes hard, hard work to get yeah. to those levels, you know. Yes. I just wanted to make yes. a point like that uh, to our client, uh, yeah. our, our people watching us. Yeah, so I, I competed with the NPC, the National Physique Committee, you know, um, or, you know, in, um, I don't, I don't, I'm to the NPC in Canada, they have the NPC in Canada, yes, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. But, um, so I was with, I competed in several um, NPC bikini contests. Um, I competed at, you know, I'm older, so I competed at the master's level. Um, and and somewhere along the line though some something changed so when i was when i was younger i used to i used to exercise and lift weights because i was trying to achieve a certain look but yeah. um you know when i got older i started wanting to more focus on getting strong and it was this desire to get strong that was this enormous game changer for me Me you know, um, it, physically it, physically strong Yes. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to get, um, but I mean, it was, and granted I'd always been strong cause I'd been, I'd been lifting weights and everything, but, um, it was previously it had been with the desire to fit a certain look, right. I'd been trying okay. to achieve a certain look. And right. so then you're very right. focused on like what you, what you can't eat and like, like kind of like, um, wanting to fit somebody else's ideal, right. That that's the problem with beauty is it's, it's a very, uh, you're, you're trying to hit uh, exterior standard. And somewhere along the line, I realized that, like, if you shift your goal to getting strong, you know, you, that, that, that's, that's, a, it's a different mentality, um, you know, rather than focusing on like what you, rather than being so much like of a restrictive nature, it's more like you want to nourish your body, right? You want right. to, you want to, you want to help your body grow, right? You want right. to help your body get strong. Right. And it, it, it just, it just changed everything. And that was kind of the, one of the things it, you know, in my book, um, Bodies to Die For, it's a thriller, right? Uh, it, it, it's set at a bodybuilding competition. It, it, the climax is at the Olympia, and um, it's a bunch of different fit girls die, right? But, um, but they, at, the, at the very end of it, we find out that, like, getting strong is the answer and that we as women need to work together to, uh, to create a better tomorrow and to, like, support each other. Strong women lift each other up. So that's, that's really, like, the end message of the book. Yeah. So your book that you wrote, Bodies to Die yeah. For, have you got one yeah. sitting around that you can show us? Here, I've got, a, um, I've got an ARC. Um, an ARC is an advanced reader copy. I, my, my hard covers are actually downstairs, but here's, yeah. here's here, it looks like this. And I yeah, actually I have a picture it. of it hanging on my wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, but yeah I love it. it looks like this. It's a thriller. Uh -huh. is, and, is it um, available yes. on all the media? Everywhere. Having everywhere you can buy it at barnes and noble target um amazon everywhere and yeah did you have everywhere. an audio one that you did uh, yep, off the book? A, so i i myself don't talk on it it's done by a um i don't you know by by like people who do this you know um but uh yeah it's available on audio it's available hardcover softcover electronic oh. for your kindle but yeah it's uh available on audio there's um with, uh, uh, there's three different actors who who do the um, who do the narration for it. Yeah, yeah. So all the, modalities. Is it what? I said it's all all modalities. You can get it in any any form. Yeah. yeah right. So so coming yeah. back to this then is that uh, 
you know, the, there is so much pressure on beauty, in particular, oh. what we were saying, uh, you know, the, the yeah. social media or the industry, uh, you know, $70 billion diet industry, mm -hmm. yeah. so confusing a lot of times. Is yeah, in, it is, in, isn't it? Everybody is in pursuit of what I do a lot of times, and uh, I'm, I'm much older than you are. Uh, I'm going to yeah. be 84 November the 1st. Yeah. I'm 84 years young. I, I plan uh -huh. to be 120. So, uh, okay. and, and, and one of the things that I felt is that um, I hear so much now, and I'm talking North American uh, television and, mm -hmm. and commentary, either Canada or the United States, very similar, uh, both countries, mm -hmm. and obviously they are very close in terms of uh, mm -hmm. be doing business on both sides and be watching each other, or be in particular watching US TV. And, uh, and, and so much uh, discussion about age, especially as they, they, they apply to males, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and more or less, uh, some of us political, I'm not here to be, get involved in politics, yeah. but yeah. a lot of times saying sure. that if you're over 80, you're done, you need a nurse and you're out, you, 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 mm -hmm. your brain doesn't work anymore. And I felt I had to write a mm -hmm. book about that. So this one, yeah. that's me at 83. And I'm training okay. right now because I'm going to go to the Arnold's. Uh, and oh, yeah. I, 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 qualif I qualified for the Arnold's in 2018 uh -huh. and then okay. COVID came. And so yeah. now I'm again training to go to the Arnold's uh, in yeah. 2025 when I'm 85 or in my 85th nice. year. And, and this is the way I look. And, and yeah. so, so uh, I say the age is just a number. It's all mm -hmm. about quality of life. And, and so really I is. talk about that in my book. And, and then I'm like you. Uh, I'm into fitness uh, and mm -hmm. have been for the last 15 years, but wasn't always that way. I started okay. in serious ways, uh, nearly died in, when I was uh, 58 or uh, 60 years old. Really? Of di oh. Diverticulitis that, okay. uh, that broke and, and then I didn't, uh, it, you have to be fairly quick within 48 hours, otherwise it Atta attacks all your critical or organs and so okay. I needed to get an operation to take a piece out of my colon so I came that oh close and, wow. and that sent me a signal at that age yeah. that uh, my wife is vegetarian and I, I mm -hmm. didn't listen as well as I should and could have and but mm -hmm. then I took everything much more serious so I uh, started to go to uh, uh, get a trainer, go to the uh -huh. gym, and uh, and started training, and 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 uh -huh. started to be much more conscientious about diet, and and uh -huh. subsequently after doing that for about six years, and uh -huh. one day somebody came up to me, and I was already in my late sixties then, and say, "Have you ever thought about competing, bodybuilding?" Yeah. I said, "Me, yeah. really?" And I thought, yeah. "Why not?" So I started training, yeah. and then. Uh, subsequently, uh, I qualified in Northern British Columbia, then I uh -huh. uh, qualified provincially, and then at the same uh -huh. time, I uh, qualified uh, bodybuilding physique uh, nationally, as well as on the Arnold's. Uh -huh. Nice. And, All and right. So, cool. And I still do that today, and then I'm very conscientious about diet. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. And, I gotta ask you, did you say you're vegan or vegetarian? Did you say vegan or vegetarian? My, my wife is a vegetarian. I'm vegan uh -huh. uh, and, and so uh -huh. about 90-10. So we both uh, uh -huh. are heavy into plant-based diets. Uh, and uh -huh. and, and, and uh, I'm, we're not into prepared foods. Uh, so if yeah. I go shopping in a shopping center, I usually stay on the outside yeah. and uh, don't yeah. go to the uh, 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 the prepared foods because I don't know what is in it a yeah. lot of times. I got, I got so, a question for you. Yeah. I, got, I got a question for you. Okay. Um, so, so how, how many grams of protein do you try to get a day? Like, like how many grams of, do you, do you pay attention to that? And, and if so, how, how do you get, how do you get enough protein with a vegan diet? I'm, I'm, I, when you're bodybuilding, I, I want to know yeah, like so, your sources of protein. 
yeah. So normally, let me tell you what I do so you can then relate to okay. it. If I'm yeah. closer to competition, I increase the amount of yeah. protein. And uh, so, but uh -huh. normally what I do in the mornings, I have four eggs, uh, soft boiled eggs. Okay. I have an avocado. Mid, mid morning, uh -huh. I have a protein drink. I buy them at Costco, the uh, a Boots. Vegan Boost. protein drink? But, okay, but, but a vegan protein drink? Correct. A and, vegan and, protein drink? Okay. Yeah. And, and okay. so, and then uh, I go to the gym in the mornings and then I have a protein drink there. I have another uh -huh. protein drink in the mid afternoon and then usually uh -huh. plant based dinner afterwards. Uh -huh. And so, uh, and then usually when I buy uh, uh, veg uh, vegetables, then I may have chicken breast with it to make sure that, uh, okay. th that balances my diet. So I do fish. Okay, so there's some and, animal and there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I just was curious because I um yeah. because it's it's really hard I found to get enough protein without without doing some eggs or some chicken or, or whatever. You know what Correct. I mean? Um, it, it it is it is hard, right? Um, yeah. especially if you're trying to lean down for a competition and you don't have as many calories, right? That that it starts to get it starts to get tricky. Um, so I just, I was just curious about that. Okay, yeah. okay. So, but right. uh, you know, uh, but I'm very conscientious of what I eat. Uh -huh. I uh, uh, yeah. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. Obviously, I don't yeah. take yeah. drugs yeah. really. And uh, and at yeah. the same time, I'm trying to be both my wife and myself very aware of. Uh -huh. But how our body functions as best we can, then I'm being yeah. very proactive in, uh, you know, the uh, medical uh, uh, organizations uh, that we are not into drugs, but more into yeah. preemptive uh, things and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and hormones and better understand our bodies uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, so that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. I just, I can, I can, I can geek out on like grams of protein, like forever. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Now the other thing, are you still very active in yoga as well and, and doing yeah, those? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I, I teach, um, I teach three yoga classes on Saturdays. I, um, I teach one is an hour long and that's an all levels class, uh, through a gym uh, in the summer. It's at the beach, but it's through the gym. And then I teach two other half hour classes later on that day at, at a homeless shelter for women and children. And that's, um, those are just kind of easier, easier classes. But yeah, so three, I teach three classes on Saturdays. Yeah. And then are you still competing or, or in some form? I have, I have not competed, I think in about four years or so, but I still lift all the time. I mean, I, I, um, I lift. I, at the, I, so I do, I do lower body twice a week. I do upper body twice a week. So that, that's like kind of like my minimum. Right. And then, and then I do additional, um, stuff often. Um, I right now, like I like to do obstacle course training also. Um, I also, I also do boxing. I do boxing on Sundays. Um, uh, yeah, I play tennis once a week. I, I do lots of different things, but I think the most important thing is the lifting. I love lifting weights. I love it. Yeah. yeah so do I actually for, obviously yeah. for bodybuilding in particular. Yeah. So, but yeah. I need to work with a trainer because, uh, okay. you know, the, uh, I'm not trying to be important, but uh, I have, I'm still yeah. very active, uh, different companies that yeah. I own, 10 different companies. Uh -huh. And then uh, I'm still doing, uh, I have done four books that I've done. Yeah. The first one that I did is Against All Odds. Uh, okay. That, and, and, but I say a lot of times to my guests that are watching me, as you know, uh -huh. writing books is uh -huh. not easy. And so, no, not at all. And, and doing my, uh, when I came to Canada about 60 years ago and, and started with uh -huh. really nothing and went through all the yeah. ups and downs, I wanted to, a lot of people said to me, you should write a book about that. And so uh -huh. for about this book here, Against All Odds, is that, uh -huh. uh, you know, the, it's not about hurrah, hurrah, how successful John is, just the opposite, actually, going through all the ups and downs. And, yeah. and then the other part, somewhat unique to me, is that uh -huh. 
Something that I really didn't know about is uh, I was born in Holland in 1940. Yeah. I was uh, during the war years, uh, uh, saw far too much that we should not have seen. And then the other part, academically, I was not a success story. I failed grade uh -huh. three and I failed grade seven three times. And they said, well, what are we wow. going to do with this guy? Maybe send him to the mentally challenged school. My parents said, no, we're yeah. not going to do that. So they said, uh -huh. we'll, 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 we'll send him somewhere where he can learn a trade. And I uh -huh. became a furniture maker. Oh, and love it. I love it. Yeah. And then we were liberated by the Canadian Army, April the 12th, 1945. And mm -hmm. it made such an impression on me that I wanted to go to the land. My dream was to go to the land of my heroes, Canada. And I did that in uh -huh. 1965. And then okay. started here virtually from nothing and then uh, uh, built a lumber mill and a number of other companies. But the, the one yeah. point that I was going to make is that at one point I walked to an, a store, into a store here in Prince uh -huh. George and somehow I picked up a book that uh -huh. and the book's title was Driven to Distraction. And uh -huh. I still don't know today even, this is the actual book that I found. Uh -huh. And, and uh -huh. I don't know why I picked it up. And as I looked at the book, book it was about ADHD mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I said oh my god that's me and I wrote yeah. that in there now uh -huh. I finally know who I am and underneath it it says yeah. January 1997 uh -huh. and and so I didn't know much about ADHD but uh, it's very very mm -hmm. common and I, f I find it yeah. all the time all around me and a lot yeah. of people say to me today, how do you mm -hmm. do all the things that you do? You write books, you attend different companies, mm -hmm. you're podcasting and you, you, you're mm -hmm. a, a, a speaker, uh, do keynotes. And how do you do it all? I say ADHD. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you left-handed by any chance? By me? Are you left-handed by any chance? Are you left-handed? No. Are I'm you right-handed or left-handed? Oh, you right are right-handed. Okay. I'll Ask if you were left-handed. Okay, yeah, okay. I just I know a lot of I, I I know a lot of people who are left-handed for some reason, and um, uh, a lot of them uh, for for some reason it's I have a lot of friends that have um ADHD, and uh, a lot of them are left-handed too. I just was curious. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I have I've got sons that have ADHD too. Okay, yeah. By me, I've got my my sons. My sons have had ADHD also. Yeah. Is that right? How old are they, uh, uh, Lori? Can oh, my, Oldest son is twenty five, and my twins How old are, are twenty. What's his name? What's his name? Because he may be watching okay. this. Okay, oh, his my oldest son is named Brian, and he's twenty five, and my twins are Hunter and Eric, and they are twenty two, and and all all my all my kids have been ADHD. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness! You know. Yeah, I'm not right. I'm not, but my husband, my husband, my husband, um thinks he is. He might be. I don't know. I, I don't know if he is, but he thinks he is. But um, my kids, my kids definitely, they were diagnosed that in school and um, they had some trouble with school too. Yeah. 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 And, and, and uh, so I call it a superpower. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I, I speak about it a lot of times in presentations that I do did once yeah. I start to understand it and I always find yeah. it amazing. Uh, there was so much stigma attached to it, less so yeah. now, but initially mm -hmm. I had no idea and uh, there's no question yeah. about it for me. I was already mm -hmm. been in 1997 when I picked up this book. I always mm -hmm. thought I was different than anybody else and, and I was not successful. Mm -hmm. It troubled me in a way. Not to the extent mm -hmm. that I laid awake about it, but it was always, I always kind of felt that I was just as smart as the other kids that I grew up with that went on to uh, go to uh, colleges, university, and then I mm -hmm. became a laborer. I'm proud of that today, but then I was kind of looked down on and uh, I kind of felt I had mm -hmm. to start over new again. And so my yeah. dream was to go to Canada and then my dream was to start with nothing. And so mm -hmm. I had one suitcase, three books, mm -hmm. two sets of clothes. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and I couldn't speak the language and I didn't know a soul and I didn't have a job. And that was in July mm -hmm. of 1965. 
and I mm -hmm. did decided to go to Canada. I flew into Montreal, took the plane across Canada. Oh my God, that's a long way. Four days, five nights, mm -hmm. and came to oh, really? Van okay. Vancouver, went to the immigration mm -hmm. office, and then mm -hmm. uh, fortunately there was a fellow that spoke German, so I could speak some German. So, and mm -hmm. I told them what I wanted to do is build a lumber mill. Now, as I already mm -hmm. said in my introduction, lots of timber mm -hmm. around uh, central British Columbia. So he said to me, go mm -hmm. to Prince George. That is 60 years ago. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I came off the bus, the Greyhound. I can still see mm -hmm. it where this Greyhound station used to be. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so I came off the bus uh, mm -hmm. with my suitcase, my three books, and my two mm -hmm. sets of clothes, and I counted my money at least three times. I had exactly twenty-five dollars mm -hmm. and forty-seven cents. Mm -hmm. And, and but, okay. but I had lots of his attitude. Mm -hmm. I always, no matter how tough today is, I will swear be better uh -huh. day tomorrow. The second one uh -huh. is passion. No matter what I do, I give it one hundred and twenty-five percent. And the other one uh -huh. is work ethic. I say even uh -huh. now today at nearly eighty-four. I get up at 5.30 uh -huh. in the morning. I yeah. always make my bed. I always think I'm late. And then, uh -huh. uh, you know, and, and every day I give it all that I got. And obviously I got lots that, uh, that I'm doing. But uh, looking back, uh, and I'm not here to talk about how successful John is. That's not what it is. But I'm connecting uh -huh. the two ADHD in yeah. particular and starting from nothing is that uh, yeah. I build my lumber mills, I have those, I have other companies, and I've been, uh, people may say, uh, being very, very successful, but it took me yeah. a long time until my 60s, until I write it, writing books, and then uh -huh. uh, doing presentations. And the one thing yeah. that I found, Lori, and that's why I'm so excited to have you on my podcast, speaking about yeah. that, is that one of the most important things from my perspective, I for even when I was already successful uh, in mm -hmm. companies and all, I did not have confidence in me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, okay. and, and so it took time for me to build that. The one was finding that I had ADHD helped yeah. me. And then the uh -huh. other part was that already I had built companies and everybody thought I was successful. I was not a very uh -huh. good communicator, and it was uh -huh. not until, it was probably in 89, 90, that somebody mm -hmm. suggested I should go to an organization called Toastmasters. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I, I I've, I've, I've that. done that, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, and, and I said, what is Toastmasters all about? It's all about, uh, they said, it's about communication. I said, is anybody going to ask me questions? No, no, no. You just sit there. And then halfway, yeah, through, make you get up and talk. <laughs> halfway yeah. through the meeting, he said, hey, John, tell us all about blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. I, I'll never go back here. Yeah. But I did. Uh -huh. I stayed uh -huh. there for yeah. 10 years, and I became a distinguished okay. Toastmaster. And, and, uh, okay. and probably as we speak, probably 450,000 people in North America are members of mm -hmm. Toastmaster Clubs. Probably 10 million yeah. of them have gone through different levels, but I went yeah. through all of them and it changed my life in combination with ADHD, mm -hmm. Toastmasters. And so I became a yeah. late bloomer in terms of writing okay. books, uh, you know, giving keynote presentations, and then yeah. being successful in business and, and then as well in podcasting. Yeah, very cool. How long have you had your podcast for? Uh, probably I started about three, four, five years ago, first with blogging, you know, so okay. that was, and then gradually we started to work with the local television station here mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and started doing just local and regional, and we have a lot of interesting people. And then yeah. COVID came, and so we yeah. couldn't do that anymore. And then I had this apartment here in Prince George, and he said, well, let's uh -huh. make a studio, and then we'll do it ourselves. And, and as you can likely see, I have two couches here. Normally yeah. what we did is uh, I was sitting on the one couch, my guest is sitting on the other couch. Uh-huh. 
and then thought, I have an apartment in Vancouver as well. Maybe, maybe we have to set up another studio there mm -hmm. to have more access mm -hmm. to more people. And then the more we thought about it, is especially looking at televisions mm -hmm. like CNN, ABC, and CBC, you know all the ones. You know, mm -hmm. more and more we saw that you look at the television is one, two, three, four different people from all places all over the world and saying, yeah, virtual is the key. So we started yeah. then doing okay. virtual and now we are podcasting around the world. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, do, I do probably about five, six podcasts a week in that mm -hmm. area, uh, about four, three or four of them where I'm a host and then guest mm -hmm. on another tour or so. And so, okay. uh, and, and I do a lot of it. I love it. And I believe podcasting. Can you imagine here we are sitting, you are in mm -hmm. Chicago, I believe you said, mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm uh -huh. sitting in yeah. Central Base, Columbia, on the other yeah. side of North America. And it feels to me that we have a relationship, you and me, yeah. already we are becoming friends, interacting yeah. all about all this stuff. And all yeah. around us, if we are doing this, is we already mm -hmm. know that tens of thousands of people are watching us. And yeah. they will be it's watching so cool. us. It, it is unbelievable. And it's only, Laurie, yeah. I believe, at the beginning. And, yeah. and I'm, yeah. I'm in the process, and particularly as it relates to uh, the challenges that we all as individuals have, I'm thinking about, mm -hmm. or will be starting a platform uh, probably in the mm -hmm. next two or three months. I've thought about it for a couple of years already. And, uh, and, and then the other part that I found in interaction in particular with younger people that I have, uh, not only high school, but uh, both colleges and university, is that I found mm -hmm. people, and you related to that as well, that what I always say, you are unique as to who you are. There is only mm -hmm. one of you around the whole mm -hmm. world. So create yeah. that confidence in who you are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, yeah. as you already related to, are struggling with mm -hmm. that, both male yeah. and female, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and so uh, to create that confidence is critically important, I believe. Yeah, I think so too, very much, yeah. And you know, that, that's, that's a great place um, to, to Come, come back to the strength training because I think I think that strength training really helps instill confidence in you you know you you put on weight over time you know you add another five pounds to the bar you add five more pounds to the bar and you see yourself getting stronger you know you realize that you can do hard things you know I mean there, there's so many days where maybe you don't feel like it but you get up anyway you do it anyway and you you know you develop that discipline and then you you know you get some time under the bar and you look back and you know, I mean, I've been I've been lifting for for decades at this point, and I, I can see how far I've come, and it it really does wonders for your self confidence. You know, um, you you feel like you also could could handle yourself if you needed to, or if you needed to like carry something heavy, you could. If you needed to scale a wall, you could. If you needed to climb a rope, if you needed to, you know, go across monkey bay, you just have a lot more confidence in yourself. I think you stand up straighter. Um, you just believe in yourself a lot more. You know. And yeah. it creates self-confidence, Lori, because you can feel Very much. good about yourself. And then yep. what, what I've done is that first mm -hmm. I knew I needed to get a trainer in my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so mm -hmm. before I was one of those, which we did, a lot of people do. At the end of the mm -hmm. year, we say, we, next year we're going to do this, that, that, and the other one. And I'm going to go and get a membership on, to the gym. Yeah. And then two weeks later, we can find a hundred reasons why I don't have time to go. Yeah. But for me, yeah. at least, if I have a trainer, then I have an obligation mm -hmm. to go. And I started that nearly 15 years ago after I yeah. nearly died. And then from there yeah. on in, basically, when somebody said, have you ever thought about competing? I already then was in my late 60s. And then... Okay. I started training and then I started competing and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and then was successful. And then, uh, you know, and now again, when I'm nearly 84 and I'm training for, in strength training, actually, 
uh, visit trainer, uh, do it three days a week. The closer we come to competition, three months be four mm -hmm. months before, in the next couple mm -hmm. of months, we'll probably go up to four days a week. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, it's now come to the point, I will, I will go out of my way making sure that I go to my training. It has become a priority yeah. in my life yeah. and all the people working around me know that John has to yeah. go to his training. So yeah, it is, I, I think, but yeah, I think you put the big pieces of your life, like the big rocks in place first and you let the other things kind of fill in the rest like sand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So as you look forward then, Lori, is that uh, you, you made references to, I think you said that, uh, you know, the, the $70 billion industry is the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the... In, in particular is the war on women bodies. Mm -hmm. What what do yeah. you see changing there? What is it becoming well, knowledgeable or it was so you know you, you made a good point earlier, right? You know, you said they can be also confusing, right? Because there's 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 so many articles, there's so many people telling you to do this, that, the other thing. I mean and and you anybody who's stuck with fitness for a while knows it's really not that complicated right it it, it really it, there the 70 billion dollar diet industry is just to it, it's to make you unconfident to make you think that you need to all these things that you probably don't need right i mean if you if you eat a relatively well balanced diet if you if you get some exercise and if you go to bed on if you go to if you get a reasonable amount of sleep and if you don't hang around people that stress you out you'll 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 be in pretty good shape you know you don't you don't need to even take a lot of supplements or anything i don't take any the only supplements that i take i i do use protein powder just because it's convenient you know i use i put i put a scoop yeah. of protein powder in my oatmeal for and at breakfast but that's like the only supplement i take like you don't need to you don't need you don't need any of that um and my my the training split that i do right now it's a really it's a really standard training split um you know i do i do upper body days and lower body days but I mean, really, you really need like like four main patterns, right? You need like a squat, some type of squat. It could be, you know, it could be a, a back squat. It could be a leg press. It could be walking lunges. You know, you need some kind of squat activity. You need some kind of hinge, like a like a like a deadlift or like a Romanian deadlift or like a you need some kind of hinge. You need like a push, right? Like a push up or a bench press or something. And you need a pull, right? Like whether it's a pull down, I mean, granted, I mean, you can get a lot fancier and, um, and I've got all sorts of thoughts and all that, but it's really not that hard for, four main things, right? You know, a, a push, a pull, a squat and a, a hinge. Yeah. That's me at 83. And then the other one yeah. saying that, uh, but I get a lot yeah. of people say to me, I, uh, I say, go to the gym or I at least start doing something. And, uh, yeah, this not mean that you want yeah. to be a bodybuilder champion. It's not necessary, no. but at least get some exercise. Yeah. Start even yeah. with walking for 20 minutes. Yep. Absolutely. And then if you uh, yeah. keep doing right. that and be, be, be careful with your diet, uh, don't mm -hmm. abuse your body and understand the very simple things yeah. about it. But there is so much money involved and, and, yeah. and all the things that you are referring to. The, it's a yeah. big, big industry that specializes yeah. in saying, buy this and you will look better. Yeah. I, uh, every time yeah. I watch TV, it just goes on and on and on about all yeah. the things that I don't think people everybody need. Wants, no, everybody wants to sell you the, the, the magic pill, right? And, and the, the worst of it is, is everybody wants to believe that there is a magic pill, right? Everybody wants to believe it because you don't want to have to actually do the work. We, we all know, right? We, we all know what you got to do, right? If you if you if you want to lose some weight, you you got to eat a little bit less calories, right? You know, like like if you can cut 500 calories a day for um, a week, you're going to lose about a pound a week, right? If, exactly. if you want to, if you want to, if you want to get smaller, you eat less. If you want to sculpt your body, if you want to add some muscle, you lift some weights, right? And and, yeah. and I mean that that that's really, you know, eat mostly real food, lift some weights, get enough water, get enough sleep, and like you know, get on with your life. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, um, and it's not that complicated. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I well, find, Lori, for, for is... you though, I was going to say, yeah, but hold on. But, but I, I will say like for a professional, like a, 
like a bodybuilder, it is more complicated. So I'm not, I'm not referring to like, say like what you're going to do for a competition, but I'm saying for your average person out there who doesn't want to get up on stage in a swimsuit, that's what they need. But go ahead. What yeah. were you going to say? So what, what I was going to say for me, my training has become, uh, you know, for, I've been doing it for the last 15 years. I love it. Yeah. And then I love if I it. get closer to competition, uh, I'm a little bit more careful about the diet and then yeah, do a little yeah. bit. But I'm so used to going to the gym and training. It has yep. become part of my life and it me feels too. good. It's not an effort for me to keep doing yeah. it. And, and then the other part that I think is super, super important is that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's what I tell a lot of people, you are special. Have... Mm -hmm peace of mind that you there's only one of you and and people mm -hmm. a lot of times are self-critical this is not right that's not right i'm not wearing the mm -hmm. right thing and all of that stuff is really not all mm -hmm. that important but to find that confidence yeah. that anyone mm -hmm. is special in their own way yeah i absolutely agree with that yeah so if you look now at the medical system uh, if I look in Canada, and I presume in the United States, although the Canadian system is different than the USA, mm -hmm. but uh, still we have more and more challenges finding docs and finding, mm -hmm. uh, you know, private uh, facilities to help mm -hmm. and guide people. If you look at uh, YouTube, has been helpful in some areas, but Till okay. finding doctors and nurses has been a real challenge here in uh, Canada, and uh, uh, you know the uh, and and our system is a universal system. Everybody yeah. gets the same. Uh, but uh -huh. in the United States, is more uh, you know more private, or you can uh, you know find specialties yeah. that uh, not not through the system. Yeah, yeah, that that is the way that they operate. Um, I I've been very fortunate. Um, I I don't have a lot go wrong with me, so I've been I've been very fortunate. Um, but I will say what what is unfortunate in um all I think all of healthcare right now is it's 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 so focused on on um dealing with disease and less on prevention. You know, it's very focused on like like giving you a magic pill, right? Um, versus like you know, the, that prevention standpoint of, you know, trying to eat a, a healthy diet and trying to, you know, get some exercise. And um, it's it's like, I, I just, I would like to see us a little more focused on prevention, but, you know. Yeah. Now, do? If, if you look at your book, then when yeah. you wrote the book, Bodies to Die For, is that, mm -hmm. What was the objective is to take people through how they well so no so so the I'll, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what um why I wrote the book okay so right. or what was the impetus for my writing that book um so in January of 2020 Jillian Michaels was interviewed on BuzzFeed News and she was asked what she thought about Lizzo as a body acceptance role model and she said well why why are we celebrating her body and not her music because it's not going to be awesome if she gets diabetes. And social media blew up, right? People were calling for Jillian Michaels' head. They were saying that Jillian was was fat shaming. But then there were other people who were saying, well, it's it's um it's not going to be great if she gets diabetes. And um and in these two warring sides, the the fitness, the fitness influencers and like the fat activists, it was this clash. And there was a lot of hatred that was spewed from both sides. And then a few months later, Adele posted a picture of herself to Instagram. And it was clear in the picture that she'd lost a lot of weight. And all these people came out of like nowhere. And they were uh, commenting, um, saying that they were disappointed in, in Adele because they felt that she had let them down because they looked up to her as a body positivity role model. But um, And then other people were saying, you know, I know it's great that Adele lost a lot of weight. Um, because it, it, it'll be healthier for her. And there, again, there was a lot of hatred from both sides, so much so that Adele came up with a statement where she said, you know, um, I was going through a dark time and I turned to exercise to help me deal with it. Uh, and But the thing is, it's a, 
a woman shouldn't have to come out with a statement because she changes her body. And you know, Adele doesn't owe any of us her body. And it was this it was this idea of these two warring sides. You know, there's a lot of good to fitness. Um, you know, but having been in the fitness industry for as long as I have, I've also seen some of the ugliness and the dark underbelly to it, especially through bodybuilding. And then um, with the, the fat, the uh, healthy at any size, the fat activism, you know, there's a lot of good to the healthy at any size movement in the sense that like you shouldn't have to be a certain size to wear a swimsuit and go to the beach. You ought to be able to just go to the beach because you want to go to the beach. Um, that you don't have to wait till you're a certain size to start living your life. But now we were starting to see um, fat activists like going after people who decide to change their bodies as if they owed them their bodies. And I wanted to probe, I thought to myself, like, like what if these two, what if this online war, right? It was an absolute war online. What if this online war moved offline? What, what could happen? And so that's what I wanted to explore. I wanted to explore how how as women, we, we're, we're tearing each other down and we're focused on the wrong thing. We're focused on what we we look like rather than focused on, on getting strong and on supporting each other. And so I wrote a thriller where these two sides clash um, and uh, some people die and the whole thing climaxed at the Olympia, which is, the, the as you know, the biggest bodybuilding competition in the world. And at the very end, you find out that, um, you know, that the the way to win the body war. When I wrote the book, it was called Body Wars. Um, the publisher changed the name to Bodies to Die For. But the way to win that body war is by walking away. Because you'll, you'll never ever, you, you, you'll never ever hit society's elusive beauty standards. You have to instead focus on getting strong because nobody can take that away from you. If you set your goal that I want to do a push up, I want to do a pull up, I want to walk a mile, whatever, you do that, man, you, you you hit that and you start to build that confidence like we talked about. And, and then again, that we as women need to quit tearing each other down. And we need, if, if we care about the world that we're bringing our daughters into, we need to be supportive of each other. And, you know, as they say, strong women lift each other up. And so that's why I wrote that book, man. I just had like a lot to say and, uh, and I said it, yeah. So... And the responses you have had have been very, very positive. I've heard that. For the most you, part. I've, I've got a couple one-star reviews. <laughs> but for the most part, I've gotten, I've gotten positive feedback, yeah. 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 How was the exercise? How do you feel about the exercise of writing a book? For me, it was something mm -hmm. that was difficult. But then again, mm -hmm. I had, uh, it took me 80 years to live it. Uh, the first one, Against All yeah. Odds. 80 years to live it, 20 yeah. years to think about it, two years to write it. But it's quite yeah. an experience. And uh, yeah. so are you contemplating more books? Yeah, I've, so I've written a second one. Um, it is with my agent right now. He is reviewing it. He and I, he's already gone back and forth with me a few times on it or, or several times on it. Um, he is, he has it again. He will go through it. He'll mark it up. He'll send it back to me and um, we'll talk about what he wants me to change. And I'll, be, I'll probably make most of his changes. Uh, and until he feels like it's ready, when he feels it's ready, then he'll try to sell it. Now, whether he'll be able to sell it or not, I don't know. You know, so it's hard to sell. What's it, what's it about? Uh, I, I don't want to say too much, but I will yeah. say that... Um, it's about a, it's about it's told from two different women's points of view. One of them is a she's an advice columnist. She's a reluctant advice columnist. She falls into the job because dear Debbie, her mentor, like takes off and goes to Brazil, and so she needs to now write the dear Debbie column in dear in Debbie's place. So she's writing with this and and, and uh, Elise, that's her name. Elise is like twenty eight years old, but she's writing in this matronly voice. She's answering all these people's questions and she's very insecure. She's answering questions about like motherhood and like marriage and, 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 and she's never been married and she doesn't have kids and she's insecure. So it, it's her. And then on the other side is a software developer who loses her job during the tech crisis, which is going on right now, uh, because people find out that she has an OnlyFans account. And so, uh, and, and so she goes on to, um, be part of a reality series called Only Fanatics, which is um, 
it's a group of OnlyFans creators living in a glass house. And, and that, that, that side delves into, um, you know, how society views, views sex work, right? Like everything from, um, you know, you know so, so OnlyFans, you know, the, the, the people who take like pictures of themselves online, uh, I, I don't want to say too much about it, but, um, I, I, I want, I wanted to explore both. I wanted to, and, and these two sides come together and I don't want to say too much more about it, but, um, but that's 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 what we're doing, and um, and I I wanted to, I wanted to again look at how society is telling women what we can and we can't do with our bodies, and how how we're being judged for what we do with our bodies. I, I'm just very curious about that. Yeah. So my observation is, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. You yeah. uh, you have an amazing background. Obviously, as you said, you were very uh -huh. lucky with your parents being very, very, very supportive. And then mm -hmm. very early in life already, you started to work uh, and gymnast and, and, mm -hmm. and started to dance. And then obviously you are very attractive in terms of uh, being blessed with being looked, I don't know how to say this, be, being Perfect, virtually. enough, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm okay, right? But I, I'm a 54 now, but there was a time when I, you know, I, I used to, you know, ma I made money off of my looks, you know, for a number yeah. of years. I mean, that that's how I, uh, you know, earned a living, yeah. But you're still very attractive, in my opinion. But, uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, yeah. And, and, okay. But so, so what I'm saying is that, uh, and mm -hmm. that's the point that I want to make, really, is that you have such a history, you've seen so much in mm -hmm. all the years that you mm -hmm. had gone through all the phases, mm -hmm. including yeah. bodybuilders in, in uh, yeah, some of yeah. the questionable areas of it, Playboy, yeah. and all the things uh -huh. surrounding that lifestyle, being yeah. a stripper, and all those things yeah. have gave, given yeah. you a lot of foundation on, in yeah. particular, how attractive individuals are, women in particular, physically and then but also it creates a lot of stress potentially in yeah. terms of questioning people yeah. and and losing confidence because all of yeah. that is very de delicate because it yeah. is the perception of others that look at yeah. you for whatever reason yeah. and judge yeah. you yeah. and and in a way then that relates to i believe you writing uh -huh. the books that you did. Yeah. And then in my case, I wrote a book about uh -huh. starting from nothing and going, yeah. and that's the feeling that I had to, about it. I want to share yeah. with other people that I've gone through all the things of lack of uh, PTSD as a result of the Second World War, mm -hmm. then uh, mm -hmm. lack of confidence or feeling that uh, was I as smart as the others and all of those things. Yeah. And I feel I want to, and then obviously becoming successful, I want to share that with others. That's why I wrote this one. And then the mm -hmm. second one was then I found out I'm ADHD and I felt I had mm -hmm. to write about that because a lot of people that were affected by it. I, I give you an example mm -hmm. of that. When I wrote this one, I sent it mm -hmm. to a lot of people that, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, were city councillors, and at one point I mm -hmm. did a keynote presentation west of Prince George. And, and mm -hmm. as I was sitting there the night before having dinner, uh, a fellow came mm -hmm. up to me and he said, after you're done uh, having dinner, I would like to talk to you about something. I said, sure, where are you sitting? He said, down mm -hmm. there. So I went down there and he said, I want to tell you that you send me mm -hmm. a book, this book, uh, uh -huh. you know, for free, and, and uh -huh. then I have a son that is 15 and he was really uh -huh. struggling with ADHD uh -huh. and him yeah. and me read your book together. Oh, nice. So, can you imagine? It makes that? it worth it, right? Yeah, it makes it worth that it, right? That alone made it worth it for me. So yep. that's why I did totally. that. Then the yeah. other one, I've heard so many people, they don't like what uh -huh. they're doing. They say in the United States, I heard a program the other day, the other day, about six months ago, where they said in the United States, 75% of the people that work don't like their jobs. And, and yeah. that's probably the same in Canada. And then 70% of the 75% that don't like the job are looking for another job. 
And then a lot of young people that I speak to or give presentations to, high schools, college, universities, uh, I, I usually say after I do a presentation is saying, so respectfully, have you ever thought about mm -hmm. what are you going to do after you have finished? And a lot of them say, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. I said, well, it's important that you kind of give thought to that because for the rest of your life, you likely will be going into a career, whatever it is, find out a bit more about a lot of people that are in, in careers mm -hmm. would like to talk to you. If you want to be a truck mm -hmm. driver, talk to truck drivers. If you want to be a carpenter, talk to mm -hmm. carpenters. If you want to be a mm -hmm. lawyer, talk to lawyers, doctor, talk to doctors, mm -hmm. or for that matter, entrepreneurs or, or business mm -hmm. people. So I wrote mm -hmm. this book about it, uh, Finding Your mm -hmm. Passion, Living the Dream. And I think mm -hmm. it's very important because even at 84, I've been working since I was 13, for 71 yeah. years, is saying, hey, John, are you living the dream? I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I do. And then the, the one that I just finished is this mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Living Young, Dying Old. And, and I'm writing another one that comes out in July. It's about, I haven't found a title yet, but it's about communications. Okay. Now, okay. if you think about these books, they are all connected to me mm -hmm. and things that I very much believe in or that mm -hmm. changed my life. And then as a result of all of this and experiences that I had, like you, mm -hmm. life experience, I, mm -hmm. I come to the conclusion that, you know, that be at peace as to who mm -hmm. you are. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and then at the same time, you are special. And that applies mm -hmm. to males, females, and all the others. Mm -hmm. There's only one of you but be yeah. at peace with who you are. And then from yeah. there on in, it builds that confidence and pursue the things that you believe in. And so that yeah. is the message that I give to the people that yeah, I Yeah, I agree with. with that very much. That's, that's how you sleep at night, right? Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. And then in terms of uh, health and fitness, uh, you know, I agree with all the things that you said. Diet is very important, yeah. but it's not yeah. complicated, uh, you know. No. And then, uh, but you have to uh, give, you know, get, move your body. Go for a walk or go to the gym, yoga, do whatever. But keep that mm -hmm. uh, uh, to keep fit. And then diet, extremely important. Uh, sunshine mm -hmm. is important, and sleep totally very right? very yeah. important. And and yeah. uh, and for the rest. The, the fewer chemicals, and especially medicine, yeah. that are chemicals you take, the better, the healthier your life. Yeah. 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 Lori, any okay. closing comments that you have? Uh, just thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed our discussion. It was, it was wonderful. Thank you. Now, for all the people that are watching us from around the world, uh, uh, subscribe to our podcast, both Lori's and mine. Mm -hmm. uh, look for Lori's book in particular. Uh, the, mm -hmm. it, it is Bodies to Die For. It's available on all the, uh, all, all the major Everywhere. areas. And then at the same yeah. time, have you, uh, have you got the book still laying there next to you? Maybe hold it up I for do. a minute. I have it right here. Sure. Yeah. Right here. And, and that's the book. Very, very interesting. And it's also in audio. And then mm -hmm. subscribe to both our podcast and then share it with others, like it and comment on it. And uh, it encourages both us, Laurie and myself, to be active podcasting around the world. Mm -hmm. and, and as I said earlier, podcasting is only at the beginning. It's going to get bigger and bigger all the time. Laurie. It was a pleasure and a privilege, and let's make sure we stay in touch. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Lori. Bye.